This hour, Baltimore City Council President Jack Young is expected to file a bill to change the name of Robert E. Lee Park. It's part of the national fallout after a self-proclaimed racist gunned down nine people in a black church in South Carolina. ABC 2 News Jeff Hager has more now on how historians are alarmed by the, 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 this bid to erase history, I guess. Absolutely. You know, first they took aim at the Confederate flag, but it certainly hasn't ended there. Now people across the country are rethinking all things Confederate, including the general who had some direct ties to Baltimore. So that adds to it is a piece of the nation's history, a handwritten copy of General Order Number 9, 150 years ago, when General Robert E. Lee made the South surrender official. So that is where um, Lee is basically saying it's over from Appomattox. It's the end of the war. But a century and a half later, the South Carolina church shootings find many communities now second-guessing any reminders of the Confederates or slavery or Lee for that matter. The bid to wipe Lee's name off of this park, off of Falls Road, comes with little recognition of his ties to Baltimore. Lee was here uh, when he was in the Army. He was here assigned to uh, work on Fort Carroll. He lived one block over on Madison Street. His family was here. He had relationships here with a lot of um, the city's uh, I don't even want to say upper class so much, but old families. In fact, highlighting the state's mixed loyalties during the Civil War, here at the Maryland Historical Society, a Confederate flag of the 3rd Maryland Artillery shares space in the same room as a flag constructed for the 4th Regiment U.S. Colored Troops by the Colored Ladies of Baltimore. Society President Mark Letzer says both help tell the story of that chapter in our history. We can't understand where we are today if we don't understand the past. It's how we got here. And that is why people like Robert E. Lee or the Confederate flag or any of these great issues need to be looked at very carefully and not, you know, make any drastic decisions. Where does it end? What, where, what else is going to happen six months from now and then we're going to change that too? And my whole thing is if you take it away and nobody learns it, then how have we gained? Some have suggested renaming Robert E. Lee Park with Lake Roland Park. But historians point out Roland Park has its own history as one of the most exclusive and segregated white neighborhoods in Baltimore, which could open that name up to criticism as well. Jeff Hager, ABC 2 News. Jeff, thanks.